uh, uh, let me start my presentation. I'm Kyungsan Kim from Samsung. Uh, the today's topic I'm going to present is uh, the SMDK inspired the uh, MM changes for 6L, especially 6L DRAM. Uh, prior to start my presentation, uh, on behalf of SMDK team, uh, we appreciate LSF MM BFV program committees for inviting and giving us the discussion opportunities. And we also sincerely appreciate all the experts here for the advices and comments interest on this topic. So today uh, I have two agenda and firstly prior to explain the, the CXA requirement kernel and the SMDK proposal. So uh, let me briefly explain the background of our work and thoughts. Um, uh, let me say the, the background of SMDK work. So as people here know, uh, CXA is a uh, promising technologies that leads to uh, fundamental changes in computing architecture. Um, as a CXA DRAM provider, uh, Samsung has developed both CXA DRAM hardware and software over the over last couple of years uh, to facilitate the adoption and widespread of CXA DRAM in rapidly. So we have been developing a CXA software development kit, SMDK, uh, since 2021 March, uh, working with uh, some industries and academic partners. So meantime, uh, we gained some kernel, kernel requirements from the works and customized the SMDK kernel. Uh, also, uh, CX8 technology has been evolving thanks to many industries' efforts. So as we know, uh, as a result of the work, the CX8 adoption stage is, uh, I believe, the gradually moving forward from the basic enablement to real-world memory tiering use cases. So around the stages, so we'd like to discuss uh, the CXA requirements to kernel and into, introduce some of the SMDK's kernel changes to uh, kernel maintainers and contributors here. But uh, please don't, don't get us wrong. Uh, we want to explain our thoughts and approaches, but uh, never force the approach. So the personally, I measure the operating system and experienced the kernel development since uh, version 2.4 around 2004. So I respect kernel experts very much and strongly believe uh, OS should be changed for a rational reason and public use. So as another uh, the background, so as we know, the, when a system with a CXL DRAM would consider a memory, memory tiering solutions, but uh, in terms of a memory tuning solution, uh, it is a typical that the, uh, when I say the very high level abstraction of memory tuning solution, the solution attempts to locate the hot data on near memory and cold data on far memory as accurately as possible. And uh, the hot and coldness of data is uh, determined by the memory consumer of the tuning solution, while the near far memory is determined by sorry, determined by the memory provider. So, so in this operation, the so memory consumer needs an identifier to determine near or far memory. So Samsung is a memory vendor. So SMDK put more weight on near far memory determinism rather than hot code determinism. So I say, so we put our effort on this way to offer the various memory tiering systems for uh, memory consumer layers, then rather than hot cold data determinism. So the following five requirements and the two proposals are the originates from the, the backgrounds. So uh, please tell me if you have uh, uh, any question or inquiries over my presentation. So the so first requirement is uh, so it is about the CXL DRAM identifier. The, it could be the API or ABI. So the first issue was addressed to a user or current context has to use a node ID of a CXL memory node to access the CXL DRAM. So uh, what is so is a uh, node ID is, uh, is not a stateful information because it can be changed during logical memory on offline or the physical hot add and removal operations. They also, 
Uh, the node ID does not present a near file memory attribute, uh, attribute of the node. So the user space and kernel space memory tiering solution need an API or ABI to identify near file memory node. The, and the, the second requirement is, uh, so it needs to prevent uh, the unintended CXA page migration. So this, the issue was happened to the while GSwap operations. So, so in order to store the swapped out pages on the file memory, the, the, in this case, the, the original content was saved in the CXL pages. But uh, as you know, the while GSwap operation, it used the DDR, it used uh, the DDR pages. So, so we thought it is kind of a promotion because uh, the CXL page is changed into DDR page. So, so what it thought was, so on the swap operation, the context that was employed the file memory, the CXL page, should not be unintentionally the promoted to use the near memory, DDR memory. So we thought this is, this is kind of a, the, the unintended promotion from CXL to DDR. So I don't think I agree with either of those requirements. Um, I mean, we, we, we already have the concepts of different remote nodes. We already have ways to do migration. Um, user space doesn't n generally need to know. The kernel handles migration to different nodes behind the back of the application, or the application can ask for it using APIs that already exist. So. I'm, I'm, I'm really struggling to see what, what is missing from our current APIs that prevents you from using the, the NUMA nodes like we currently do. Uh, um, sorry, so, uh, I'm sorry, uh, could you please? Yeah, I guess what uh, Matthew is trying to say is that you can control your uh, memory placement, right? Um, but I guess what uh, the concern in his is uh, uh, this is that uh, you use that uh, NUMA APIs to explicitly put some memory on a remote node, but then you have a memory pressure on that node. You get that memory swapped out, but it goes to the front swap, which from that point of view is uh, a closer memory. So essentially you are moving memory from a distant node to a closer node while it's not being used, so essentially kind of um, um, inversion of, of the uh, hotness with respect to um, close memory. Is, is, is that correct? Uh, yeah, I think so. S oh, okay, I see what you're saying in that slide. Okay. Is there any reason why we can't, is there any reason why we can't store the pages in Zswap on the same node? Well, uh, why, why does it have to be DDR? So actually, it happens in the the GSwap operations. So, so as you know, the uh, the PR, PFRA, the, the GSwap implements the prompt swap. So prior to do the disk swap, uh, it tried to allocate uh, DDR pages, and when it succeeds, it it stores the 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 swapped out pages. Compressed and uh, DDR page. So, so what? Why it happens is a uh, GSwap has a uh, internally GSwap has uh, some allocators, three types of alloca allocators. So the the original content was uh, stored in a CXL page, and uh, while GSwap operations, as it is a prompt swap, the GSwap allocator uh, find out uh, find out the pre page in current spaces from DDR pages. So it is allocated. So as a result, the CXL page is stored in the DDI page. So, so it's also what happened in GSwap operation. So, so the allocator that DSwap is already using, for example, ZSmalloc or ZButter, whatever it is, already right. has a page in DDR, right, is what right. you're saying. Right. So perhaps we should, what you're saying is we should enlighten these allocators to use pages on the same source node. Right, right. I see. So, so this is, uh, 
Correct. So this this we saw kind of unintended promotion. So what is sold was uh, this case. Probably we could use a uh, so CXA page as well. So otherwise, <laughs> let me say yeah. the in contrast, if it is a DDR and to CXA page, it is normal because it is a demotion. Yeah, right, but it's not very much different from a regular NUMA case where you are uh, reclaiming something from what what tends to be a remote node to a Z-Swap. So it sounds like that we need to extend Z-Swap to preserve right. locality right. of any memory that right. it's swapped actually, out. So. Yeah. yeah, actually. So so basically, yeah, this is kind of uh, that happens in GSAP operation, but as you said, so we need uh, some more information that we can access, uh, we can split the CXL or the memory. Uh, one follow-up question. I mean, when we swap something to C-swap, we expect that it's cold because otherwise we would not be swapping it out. So wouldn't it even make more sense to prefer slow nodes over fast nodes in that case? Like, would you want to preserve like the node or would you actually want to go to, an, to a slower node because you're swapping something out so you don't expect anyone to use that in the near future, right? Uh, uh, right, uh, so actually the, the which one is slow or which one is faster is a, is a kind of, a, for us, it is kind of some different uh, problem area because uh, uh, even the same CXL memory or the, the multiple CXL memories can be the slow or faster node, node. but uh, here uh, in this requirement, what the address is, so not to solve the, the problem you addressed, it, but to solve uh, the it needs to way to protect the uh, uh, explicit way to avoid uh, the unintended promotion. Okay, uh, and the other to, thing is in, in, your, tho in your thought, uh, in case number one, you said that there is no way to present near far attribute of a node, at least like in SysFS, I know that there is like a distance attribute for each node, which tells you, I right. think from HMAT or whatsoever, uh, that uh, like if it's fast, fast or slow, implying near or far, I would have assumed to some degree. What else is missing there? Uh, right, uh, actually, yeah, it's true. Uh, HMAT or a slit or sled or some CDAT informations, uh, it, it is geared to provide the near far the informations. But uh, so actually, this could be, this could be the way. But uh, uh, here, what you want to say is, uh, so so in, it is needed kind of the 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 data of information is further needed. So here, uh, what it uh, what it addressed the what is so why this problem? Okay, so I guess I have heard somebody is somebody remote having question or yeah. comment. Yeah, I was I was trying to ask. Uh, uh, so, so the, the the two bullet points that that we kind of brought out, right? The first part, I think there is libmem kind, which is already kind of providing and user space API to kind of help applications allocate based on like you know criteria, right? I want to allocate memory with this attributes kind of thing. So, th so the fact that the new ID can change across reboots or across memory hot plugs is kind of abstracted already by libraries like libmem kind and, and 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 the second part like you know whether the cxl page should be demoted to zswap i think we should look at this from the point of view of memory tier hierarchy right what does it mean to have a hierarchy with the cxl device and a friend swap right cswap right where do i put cswap right should cswap carrying the ram be a lower memory tier than a cxl tier and i think i think that clearly controls where the demotion happens and how the demotion happens. Right? I'm, not, I'm clearly not sure why CXL page is getting demoted to CZWAP with the DDR kind of thing. The only reason could be that the compression overhead is higher than the latency access, right? So th those are the two things I think I, I wanted to bring up. Um. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't. I don't catch your the point of your question. As I was not sure whether others are able to hear. I mean, the, the first part of the point uh, shouldn't libmem kind of solve that problem. Uh, you mean the, the uh, mem mem kind has happened this yeah, problem? Uh, right. Uh, yeah. yeah. 
Ram kind is kind of a, the high level, the use cases that uh, need this one. So our we also we use a, the JMalloc uh, extension, you know the base li base library of Memkind. So yeah, the heap extension the third party heap extension library is uh, so one of the use case that need uh, the identifier. So in case but we could say yeah, that is. Able? Yeah. Why was libmemkind not able to use hmat attributes to make that decision? Why would you want a stable node ID? Uh, Isn't hmat attribute enough to make that decision? I hear uh, the, the in this uh, requirement, what I want to address is, uh, yeah, node ID is uh, so more or less so managed to be used to identify the near memory or far memory, but ID itself is uh, just the, the the integer number. So it doesn't present uh, the near or far attribute and uh, the node ID can be changed. So we, we thought, uh, so another another way, obey, another way uh, better than the node ID. So let me, uh, let me present, present the how the our presentation, our implementation, the sort of the, the requirements probably it would be helpful to help you understand. So uh, for the, the, the these two requirements, so SMDK, so we, we designed some uh, new APIs to allow the explicitly, explicitly allocate uh, the CXL memory or DDR memory. So specifically, uh, we extended the uh, uh, three system calls so far, MMAP, MBIND, and set main policy. And in current space, uh, we expanded the uh, G log pages. So here, uh, specifically, we added uh, the map normal or map exmap flag on MMAP. So map, for example, map normal explicitly uh, access a DIM DDR memory and map EXMEM explicitly access a CXL memory. And inside the kernel, uh, it is uh, mapped with uh, the GFP preggers, uh, that is a precious resource. So I'm sorry we use that too. So we also use the GFP normal and GXP <laughs> EXMEM. So we also experienced the, the similar problem with um, Mike. So yeah, uh, here what we want to address is, uh, so we allow the, the implicit and explicit uh, CXM memory access in user space. So what it means is, uh, so when user space calls a uh, MMAP or MBIND or MAM policy using these two specific plugins, that it can access uh, uh, DDR memory or CXM memory explicitly. So otherwise, the allocation will fail. On user space, we also allow the implicit call. What implicit call is uh, just vanilla use. Then in case, uh, when the, the Numa traversal or the John traversal fallback happens, then the, the CXN memory can be allocated implicitly. Why we allow this is uh, for compatibility use. Uh, and uh, as you mentioned, the use case of this is a user space memory tiering solution. So specifically, it could be uh, the heap allocator like a libc or memkind or jmalo or numacity or libnuma. And uh, here, what you want to say is, uh, but inside current, current space, we only allow the explicit allocation request to CXM memory. Why we do it? Do this is uh, about the third requirements. Um, this is to avoid the unpluggable condition by chance. Because uh, when CXL, uh, when the kernel allocates CXL memory implicitly, it could make a, when, when the data is uh, the metadata of a kernel, it could it make uh, the CXL memory unpluggable. So uh, we, uh, we allowed the kernel space only able to access CXM memory when it explicitly 
request six in memory. So uh, we have 10 minutes, so uh, let me move on to the, the another requirements. So uh, this is uh, the requirement three. Uh, it is about the six set DRAM pluggability that uh, we discussed a lot uh, while thread. Uh, the issue has happened uh, a random unmovable allocation has make, uh, made uh, the uh, CXL DRAM device unpluggable. So it happened out of kernel space. So kernel space allocation, uh, specifically pinning for a meta, kernel space metadata, which is uh, not, not movable, such as uh, the struct task struct or struct page or join. Or uh, it mostly happens on current space allocation, but it even rarely happens on user space. For example, pinning for DMA buffer. If, if user space allocates from zone movable and you try and DMA pin, it reallocates the page from zone normal. It moves it out of zone movable. So that, that, that can't happen. Um, I'm so, uh, sorry, pardon me. If, if, if user space allocates a page from zone movable, yes. and then it tries to pin it for DMA, yes. we reallocate the page from zone normal. So what you're saying there can't happen. Ah, uh, uh, okay, okay. So uh, what, what it says, uh, yeah, yeah, it will be allowed on zone normal. When you just pay, is it right? When you just pay is pin the data, then it use a zone normal. But uh, what I say was uh, when CXL memory become a memory node, and vanilla it will be use a, it will use a zone normal, then uh, you just pay pin for DMA buffer, then it the yeah the CXL data will be. Uh, I mean the normal. thing is if if you don't use zone movable, you get what you what you ordered. Like if you say like give it to so normal, I I want any kind of kernel allocations to end up here, and actually a kernel allocation ends up there, then it's your fault. You should have configured memory hot plug to use so movable, for example, and not so normal. Yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. This kind of I I agree. This is a kind of kind of arguable that it could be issue or not. But uh, here, uh, what I want to what I want to address was uh, when you use a uh, John normal. So this was uh, happened in especially kernel spaces. So actually, we don't experience the the user spaces the cases. But uh, in our the analysis code analysis, we found out that even the user space can happen. But uh, what the real issue was uh, happened in the the kernel space allocation here. But uh, as we discussed a lot uh, through thread, uh, I think uh, the using John movable or John movable prefer concept can resolve the the requirement, but here this slide, uh, what I want to address is uh, just uh, the issues that we experienced and uh, the requirement. Requirement. Yeah, right. So just just to stress again, if you're using so normal, you're telling the kernel use it for whatever you want. Use it for unmovable allocations, movable allocations. There are no guarantees. So if you want some guarantee that you can unplug something again or ev evacuate it, then use so movable. And I think like with CXL, if the CXL nodes are managed in a way that the kernel can like decide to assign them all to zone movable somehow, for example, as we had with the DAX framework where you can then online the memory, you can tell it to do that. Yeah, not, not to mention that you really do not want to have your kernel metadata in something that has unbound latency. So uh, you don't want to use uh, zone normal for I, uh, CXL nodes whatsoever. Yes, uh, so I think uh, in this requirement, we I think here we all agree that, the probably we all agree that, so John normal is not enough to handle the CXL memory, but uh, uh, but uh, we addressed uh, the new John, but uh, probably John normal and John preferred normal is enough to just to handle with uh, the probability issue. But uh, there is uh, some, some other requirements we have, so we, uh, we we came to address the the new John. So, yeah. So uh, regarding this, uh, our so this uh, 
So the, the 68 DRAM, uh, probably this is a bit different from the people here, but our thought is uh, we thought that the CXL DRAM should be able to be used in a selectable manner, the pluggable or unpluggable. We thought that the curling context should be able to determine it. I mean, the, the zone level should not confine it. That, that is what we thought. So, but uh, I apologize for confusion uh, while discussion. So uh, please can get, don't get this wrong. So, but pluggable and unpluggable is a uh, mutual exclusive. So it cannot happen at the same time on a single CXL DRAM channel. And, and uh, let me move on to the two more requirements and uh, let me explain how we uh, addressed it, how we solved it. So the, the first uh, requirement is uh, uh, too many CXL nodes can be appear appearing in user end. So, so issue was uh, the uh, a CXL, the server vendor has ad addressed it. Uh, the many CXL memory node will be appeared to the user end, uh, along with the uh, development of a CXL capable server and switch and fabric technology. We thought. Uh, uh, right now, uh, uh, industry is maybe a CXL capable server system is made is being made uh, more than ten CXL memory channels. Uh, then, then what it what it could happen is uh, then currently a user and the need to be aware and to manage the node using third-party software uh, such as a uh, lib uh, Numa or Numa CTL as we know. Uh, for example, to lead to the aggregated bandwidth among the CXL nodes. Uh, so what is sold was uh, kernel uh, to provide an for cutter also would provide an, sorry, an abstraction layer to, to deal with uh, the nodes seamlessly. Uh, we thought uh, that traditionally a node uh, implies uh, multiple memory channels from the same CPU distance. So we thought that a multiple CXL DRAM can be appeared as a, uh, as a single node as well as a separate nodes. Uh, so what is also more was at that time, uh, uh, by the way, node is the largest memory mounting unit in MM subsystem, as we all know. So node, a zone, and body, page. So also, historically, a new zone has been added to properly deal with a new different hardware and software algorithm. So. So we thought, uh, what if the management dimension for a single CXL memory channel would be smaller than node? Or uh, if a single, mem single CXL memory channel always be a separate node, then to handle the multiple CXL channels, then what it means was, uh, uh, as I mentioned, the user space need to aware the, the multiple memory nodes, and user space need to aware and control it. So the, the management responsibilities moves on to the user level. So or so the kernel space need to make a, a bigger management unit than node. For example, kind of a super super node. So that was our thought. Yeah. So um, I'm sorry. I, I will have to cut you short because uh, uh, we are overflowing to the next. But. Uh, to the next slot, but you can talk to pe uh, people. I guess you have okay. outlined what the problem is. Okay. And uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. okay. So the fifth. Uh, okay. 